Good morning and welcome to Wednesday morning Be the Light Meditation. Believe me, I know how hard it is to make sense of these times. I often say we weren't given an operations manual to live in a world that is fear-based and falling apart and not making sense and increasingly more painful and simultaneously receiving light and messages and higher vibrations, getting new ideas. And some of you are having visions. You're, you're having disembodied beings come and talk to you. So delightful divine beings, hopefully. Uh, the reason I do these meditations is to give you confidence and courage that all this is normal because you didn't sign up for normal this time around in this lifetime if you're listening to this meditation today and somewhere along the line maybe as a child you looked around and said mm, i came from this family mm, why aren't teachers nice in school and you had a sense of why do things have to be congested and hard well you were asking those questions because the type of being you truly are in your heart and what your consciousness holds is balanced. It's attuned to higher possibilities of what? Truth, beauty, freedom, integrity. So I understand that it has been really hard. So uh, we do simple processes to help us uh, go into a light trance and let our bigger, higher consciousness self access more of the truth to give us more confidence and courage to keep going every day in this lifetime where sometimes things that you thought were solid like jobs or relationships are just like sand times of sand sand of times whatever that term is actually i'm not even sure what it means but everything has a timing and if you are becoming more honest more reflective more selective of what you do and who you spend your time with. It is completely natural for you to reassess things as you look around and things are becoming more of a cesspool. People who are very confused and frightened do what? They fight, they fight all the time. And when they hear the truth, they might even fight harder. It's like a child who truly doesn't know the whole thing will sometimes uh, fight back or resist or even blame you. It's your fault I can't behave. <laughs> so because you are what I call the meek, the kind, increasingly conscious beings that will inherit the earth, there's a certain... Um, differentness that is almost like building up pressure in the plates of the earth the teutonic plates of the energy fields of the people on your job your bosses even your own partner beloved your children where there is a discrepancy in vibration that feels unsettling so i hope through these meditations you can feel more settled so today I didn't realize it, but I think uh, I think I think courage on our spiritual path and learning who we are and what our real mission is here takes the ultimate courage. And you might constantly refabricate it according to new information. And believe me, this will drive other people in your life crazy and they will call you crazy. But don't worry. The more you learn to drop in and truly hear spirit and reflect on your truth, the stronger you will get and you will emerge victorious in your previously dualistic, confusing, sometimes agonizing world. And those that will meet and see you. I don't want to say the end of your journey because the journey continues. But as you stand in your own this authenticity and power, those that see you and recognize you, they are also standing in their power 
game is over. No more power struggle. That's when things begin to create with ease and joy. Resources, resources are shared because there's no survivalism. There's no control over or predatory behaviors. So know that things are moving in that direction. And sometimes the most torturous, heart-rendering, painful things are just you finally substantially clearing the decks of your own traumatic uh, stepping stones in your life that got you here. And I know that we save the biggest boulder, the thing that we're most afraid of facing, that the trauma, whatever it is that lives in our body that keeps us in a fearful, unsure state, when you approach that, that is the scariest, but that is a sign that you are close to the finish line and that you do have the courage and the tools and loving people around you to help you maybe limping across the finish line. So don't give up. Do not give up on your spiritual path. So I'm out here. It's my she shed. It's real tiny, but it's very sweet. And I have this book, and it's uh, Maya Angelou, and I picked it for today. And guess what I opened up to? One isn't necessarily born with courage, but one is born with potential. Without courage, we cannot practice any other virtue with consistency. We can't be kind, true, merciful, generous, or honest. So if you're here on this call with me today, you have lots of courage to face what is not true, what is not you. I love that term, the not me. When we're being outside of ourselves, being the not me, pleasing other people, especially women, people pleasing, after a while it becomes intolerable because your own soul, your own life, your own spark begins to dim. And that's when depression sets in. And it doesn't have to be that way. It takes such courage to say, what do I want? I am worthy of receiving what I want. I have the courage to sort my true needs from my wants. I have the courage to look at what are socially fabricated wants and needs? And what do I truly need as a divine messenger bringing new light and new ideation to the planet to live free and enjoy? It takes courage for these self-reflections. Okay, here's the, here's the next one. Oh, I love my Angela Pocket Wisdom, both pages are on the same thing. She says, I believe probably the most important single thing beyond discipline in any artistic work is dare. Dare yourself. Dare yourself to do more. Dare yourself to join in. So that's going to be, we're going to drop into a meditation now. And the theme is going to be I dare myself to step off my safety uh, chair. Imagine that you have this safety, comfortable chair. And comfort is one of the pathways. Seeking physical, mental, emotional comfort is one of the ways that we trick ourselves into thinking we will win. <laughs> no, little bits of comfort along the way. And of course, true comfort is finding the seat of your soul in alignment with your words, your activities, and how you show up in the world. And that is what our meditation will be about, looking at how is our desire for protection and physical comfort so separating us from that daring, passionate, fabulous feeling of being alive and expanding and daring 
to be ourselves. Okay, so if you're new on this call, this is how we drop into the Be The Light Meditation. Go ahead and shut your eyes. Take a deep breath through your nose and out through your mouth. We ask and intend to set a sacred space. Imagine a beautiful whole on of balance and geometric structure over your entire body now. Only energies of the highest light may be in this space. We remove everyone else's energy. It doesn't mean that we forget all about other people. It means that no one else's energy or thoughts or agendas belong in your personal energy field. For some of you, that might be, what? It's true. Your parents, your beloved, everyone. How can you think and operate from your own authentic vibrational profile if their energy is bouncing around and it's triggering you and giving you shoulds? So take a deep breath, and if you can allow it, tease all the energies out of any other person. How about this? Any other protocol, any other rules, any perceptions, because to be honest with you, all perceptions and rules and structures within humankind are built on the past and outdated principles. Take a deep breath and imagine that you're going to bring solutions, the therapies, a new vibration that maybe you haven't even quite embodied yet. That needs to be nurtured from a place of complete protection. In other words, if anybody else's energy is in your field, it's like one little eyedropper of coloration put in and suddenly you're thinking and feeling what they're thinking and feeling. We are done with that. We are autonomous, sovereign beings seeking to align with and embody our highest vibrational profile as created at source, which can become your full operational system here now. So we must have courage and clarity in commanding that everyone else's energy be released now. now the first thing you notice is, is it, there's nothing anxiety provoking about it at all. In fact, it's quite reassuring and calming. You can feel that your physical body is still here. Feel the weight of your physical body. Feel the outline of your skin, but feel the spaciousness to breathe without the crowd, without the crowd of your kids, your partner, your teacher, whatever. For this meditation, this space is yours. And the beauty of the Be The Light meditation is you can rekindle, remember, reactivate, and launch new experiences in your life but you must come from this still point. Take a deep breath through your nose and out through your mouth. So imagine a picture that you are sitting in your comfortable chair in your life. And where does that chair reside? In your heart. That is your core operational system, your headquarters administration. It is not your mind. So you're sitting in your chair in your heart and you go ahead and pull the nightshade down on your mind. And isn't it interesting? You can completely shut your mind down and you can still hear me. You can still take it in 
and receive it. But you won't have that incessant chatter, monitoring, and screen. That mesh screen that the ego says, well, is this true? It's not true. Who does she think she is? Her voice sounds like my mother. Stop the mind. Even my saying that, you could feel it costs a little. Eh. So we begin this recreation of our lives in our heart by stilling our mind. Imagine that you are sitting in your comfort chair, in your heart. And I'm going to ask you a question. Of course, you're not going to answer it. But you're going to ask your heart. Have I given over my life to physical comfort, material goods, and not making any waves? Have I lived a not-me life? What part of me feels a sadness, a numbness that still resides in me? And what fear or reluctance is underneath that? Was there a time in my early years where I did not feel safe and decided to build a very strong house, a very strong relationship, something that would harbor me. And as you are reflecting, it often is more of a feeling than the actual story, or maybe you will see who taught you to feel that you couldn't reach out for more. Who are you? Or maybe you are invisible. Maybe you are bad. So take a deep breath in. And we're going to surround ourselves because they're always there with angels, beautiful divine beings, Jesus Christ, Buddha. We're going to ask them all to surround us and we're going to ask them, am I innately good? Or am I bad and undeserving to be my own divine self? And I think the answer came the minute I asked it. Who are you not to hold this beautiful divine being in complete, complete pride, respect, this being that you are, to acknowledge and to ignite its heart of belonging, of worthiness, of goodness. So if you believe in these divine beings and their words, receive their blessing as we ask and intend to release the old boulder the old story, the primary, primary insult to your beingness on earth as a divine being from the Creator's heart. So take a deep breath and imagine that there's just a beautiful little washing, purification. I was at the ocean yesterday washes in the water washes in let it wash into your body that place in your heart that has held that unworthiness non-me self and let it wash away and if it were a boulder let each subsequent wave wash away more let this boulder become sand particles of sand that cannot hold together in a boulder anymore. They are melting, melting at the powerful truth. And now it is washed away to one grain of sand. And let's keep that one grain of sand so you can acknowledge your human journey 
and the courage that it took you to come this far. So we are going to instill appreciation and love and nurturing for that being who kept going, even though that boulder, that was faith. That was courage. So breathe into that little grain of sand, and that grain of sand is now becoming a star. And that star is twinkling, and that star will be seen by every other human who is suffering long on their journey, and they will see that you, by virtue of having courage and sticking with your bigger plan to be this light, they will want to bathe in the light of your star and receive your wisdom. And this is how we change the world. Our problems become our light. And then we have the right, the certificate, the graduation to walk others home to their heart, to their being me self. So acknowledge what you took on when you were born. It took great, great, great courage, okay? So now we're going to come back to the moment, this moment. And you are sitting in your comfort chair. In what area of your life where you have deferred your passions and your dreams, pick one area that you are now choosing to release the story of limitation. I can't do it, it's too much money. What will my partner say? Blah, blah, blah. And it's much easier to look at it straight in the eye. Now that you have transformed the initial blockages, you now know you're worth it. You now know you deserve it. And you've identified that this will help you be a shinier star and happier. Because most people live for material comfort. And you're coming to polish your soul to be the brightest star to bring art, information, New ways of cooking, whatever you do, cleaning homes. I love to clean. To be the light of the creator, bright and strong, with your own personality, your own unique signature, all through it. It's so beautiful. So let's imagine that you've chosen this one area to reconfigure, to dare. So imagine previously that you probably thought, well, I'd be walking out on a diving board. What will catch me? What will happen if I leave this horrid job or horrid relationship? What will be next? So we're going to focus on that. You don't need anything outside of yourself to move forward towards that which will make your soul sing. Paint the picture within your soul guided with your higher knowing and spirit guides or whoever you pray to. And all of it magnetizes and this is physics. It is a reality because everything of a lower vibration finally is attracted to and settles in to a higher vibration. And you're simply wanting to be of greater service, more in alignment with your true divine self assures success. The more successful humans Accessing and retaining light on earth assures 
that the entire new reinfoldment of the vibrational milieu of earth delivers a new brighter reality for humans to choose to live in you are that transitional agent you are that bridge so today you're feeling into what do i dare myself to do you've already established how courageous you are getting to this point you've solved so many problems so feel the strength of the courage in your heart and they've often said it's a light worker light worker warrior no it's not a war it's an offensive move towards light imagine and see yourself even though you don't know the details imagine that all the elements all the particles of light are moving towards you now that will help you make the decisions find the money create beautiful outcomes all you have to do is ask and intend so in your mind repeat after me I ask and intend to attract all that I need for this daring new endeavor. I trust that the universe meets me. I step into my new embodiment of joyful anticipation and readiness for all that is to serve me on my daring, passionate next step. And so it is. So you have just planted a seed in your heart that will radiate out colors, vibrations, forms that those that are to co-create, support you, give you what you need, will feel it. And those that are ready, there will be a beautiful new dance because you decided to be courageous and to ask for it and the universe and the people who are awakening will meet you we also acknowledge that sometimes spirit's magic doesn't arrive in our timing or our envisioning but maybe that perfect beloved will pop up at the grocery store and you'll both bend over and bang your heads together and oh my god <laughs> you can't force magic the alchemical process of planning for the fruition of your dream believe me your guides the angels source your higher self everything is conspiring and they are in complete joy that you are using your creative imagination to employ the tools of physics and vibration to move yourself on the game board of your journey to the next joyful moment spot in your life by co-creating with the vibrational grid of all that is in alignment with your true self. So these are all truths. You can find them in any religions. It is simply vibration. Take a deep breath and let this seed begin to grow roots and blossom gently, bringing you to the garden of heaven, of paradise on earth. Beautiful. So as we end this meditation, put a beautiful golden resilient egg around your entire body. We do this so that the outside world bounces off while this tenderness, this little new little shoot of light, we don't have other people yakking at us getting in. No, you're making new creations. You're planting a new garden 
and your gardening assistants, the ones who are helping you are master gardeners, divine beings who oversee and watch your journey and are here to assist and support you. So golden resilient bubble. And I'm gonna sign off on my talking part of the meditation. I'm Jan Jorgensen at soundandlighthealingarts.com. Thanks for joining me today.